I'm here for the mildly interesting people production meeting. Hi. Am, I, am, I, am I in the right place? I've heard so much about you. Welcome. That's not a typical uh, thing that people become obsessed with. Mildly interesting people. It's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> Okay. That's are our we, new tagline. You... Hey, no, I feel you getting ready to click away. Just hold up. You, you miss know. some really funny blah, blah, blah when you do that. Right. Just... Sure. We're getting stuff organized. It'll be okay. This is a production meeting. For those of you about to click away, because you're like, this is this is too long already. We do a lot of the YouTube shorts. So if you'd prefer something that's a little more fast paced and quick, you still get a feel for the show. Go ahead and, and view a few of those YouTube shorts and see if those are more your style. If you're listening on the podcast right now and you're like, what is a YouTube short? It's a short. On, it's short. It's less than a minute. On YouTube. Come on over to our YouTube channel and check some of them out. It's like all the content we create, but in bite size pieces. Oh, that reminds me. I, I had an idea, but it's production. So I'm going to make a note to talk okay. about it during the actual production. I'm jotting this down. We know what you came for and we are here to bring it to you. It is time for mildly interesting questions. Cammy's favorite part of the show. I love this part so much. And if you're a return viewer, probably you're favorite part of the show too let's be honest our witty banter isn't what keeps bringing you back to be sure so <laughs> if you've never seen the show before we do a segment called mildly interesting questions it's lightning round questions we ask each other five questions which we have to answer as quickly as we possibly can uh cammy goes first and asks me five questions then i return the favor and ask her five questions the idea behind it is it's supposed to give you some insights into our personalities that might not otherwise come out without these questions and then the other part of it is we're actually using we're actually workshopping potential questions for guests on every real full-fledged episode of Mildly Interesting People. If you're a new listener, listeners. we talk over one another constantly, which makes editing an absolute joy. I was just going to say, if they particularly like one of the questions that you ask me or I ask you in our production meeting, lightning rounds, they should let us know it's a great question uh, so that we can add it to our list of we Next always, round of questions. Yeah, we always appreciate feedback. So please, if there's anything that you're like, oh, this, this question was great. Or as Mahesh has done for us, if you want to submit questions to Cami, DM her on Instagram or contact her otherwise so that I don't see it ahead of time. Right. You have to, because Rick is not accepting questions for me. He apparently not has. Yet. A ton of them. I'm making another production note. I, this is getting real official. I've got like my production notepad here. I'm drawing oh, so, like a small, a little riser underneath the martini on my notebook. I drew an olive in it. Cammy likes to narrate, in case anybody was wondering. I'm a little um, anxious today. You're the one who is all psyched on recording. Are oh, you I'm okay? super psyched about recording. Okay, just, cool. During these shows we may go off on tangents based on what the question makes us think of or like if we we feel like we need some more exposition there uh but when you watch mildly interesting questions in the shorts it's boom 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 maybe a little explanation but again it's all under a minute often like 30 seconds so if you're interested go watch the shorts even if you're listening to us on the podcasty platform thingamajig just Come on over to the YouTubes, watch some shorts. Are you ready? Squeak your chair squeak out. In the chair. Get my get my wiggles out. All right, let's do this. Let's right. go. I'm excited. Would Would you rather be complimented sincerely or insulted? Insulted, easy. I thought so, yeah. I'm the one who takes the negative feedback. Cammy gets the false compliments. I said sincerely. Oh, sorry. I meant sincere compliments. <laughs> Did I say false compliments? You just decided to insult me because you're more uncomfortable with insults than compliments. I don't know. That, that's, again, 
mildly interesting people cheaper than therapy. Therapy. Uh, Rick, who is the best Muppet? Based on my heritage, the Hungarian fish thrower. What's his name? Isn't it Harry or something? Something. I have many, many favorite Muppets, which makes it hard to make a decision. So I just, I have to go on that basis. Okay. Uh, Contributor question from Mahesh. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Who is your favorite superhero team? I, you know, I'm, I live in Portland. It's the land of hipsters. Like we have to like the off the wall kind of things. So uh, I'm going to squeak a little bit there because we're hipsters. So there are many popular groups of superheroes whom I appreciate, even some in the DC universe. But I will tell you, it's a tie between two short run series that I owned as a child. One, Shogun Warriors, <gasps> which was an amazing series that only lasted like 20 issues, but it was basically, you know, like a predecessor. It was, it was between Ultraman kind of days and a predecessor to basically Power Rangers. So like those robotic, like people driving robots, Shogun Warriors was that. Okay. And it was really good. I really liked that series. And I can still remember, like to this day, can still remember panels from that series, even though I lost the books. Like, <gasps> Was it the same tragic moving accident where you lost? Mm-hmm. Oh. No. No, I've lost comic books twice. One was we were, you know, packing at the last minute to move. And I was like, oh, I kind of like this series, but I'm sure I'll be able to to pick it up again when I get back to the States and threw it out, came back to realize I had the entire series in pretty much mint condition. I had all 20 issues and I had thrown it away. So live and learn. The Dumbass. second one. <laughs> I'm <sorry>. I, <laughs> now I'm going to make it a three way tie. So the other one. That was not yep. a supportive partner statement. I apologize. I'm going to do two two good and one evil. So the second one is the Micronauts, which if uh, people have never seen the Micronauts, they're like little teeny, teeny, tiny people who exist in the, you know, the, now I'm spacing the name of it, where Ant-Man like spends his days. Oh, yeah. A little tiny, tiny, teeny place. Yeah. And they were, they're basically superheroes for that. And because of popular culture, I'm like the metaverse. And I'm like, it's not the metaverse, you asshole. I want to um, call it the multiverse. And that's not right either. So, mm-mm. so I'm sorry to fans of Ant Man that I can't remember that off the top of my head, but that's where the micronauts live. Let's and just they, call it the miniverse. And they are like a riff. They're kind of Guardians of the Galaxy esque. So they got like some sarcastic robot guy and like so micronauts. So micronauts. Okay. Shogun Shogun Warriors, Warriors. Micronauts. Final evil group is called the UFOs, who would show up like UFO? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and this is why I like them. So as folks may know, I I this was probably my favorite comic and I'm, if you're listening on the podcast i'm pointing at a hulk who's behind me um they were they would they were show up several times in hulk they might have shown up in other stuff but it was basically you know another billionaire like a tony stark kind of guy who wanted to try and recreate the fantastic four and so he took a spaceship and three other people and went and intentionally got bombarded with cosmic rays and they transformed into these crazy evil superheroes. They had practically the same powers as the fantastic four. So like, was that a guy, Marvel universe? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like the woman could transform into mist kind of like invisible girl. <laughs> and then there was, there was another guy that the entire hull of the spaceship melted around him. So he was kind of like the thing. And then Metal? another guy could shoot, photons yeah but metal another guy could shoot cosmic rays kind of like johnny is this the metal sign what's the metal sign that's the metal sign yeah yeah i did it right he was totally metal so that's my answer shogun warriors micronauts ufos 
When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? That was a long time ago. It was. What did you want to be? Uh, give me an age range because it varies. Uh, youngest, five to youngest eight. memory. Yeah, five to that eight. would be that would be a doctor. You want to be a doctor? Uh-huh. And why? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what the motivation was. Like, I really loved watching Quincy, and so I was like kind of intrigued by that. And then, you know, when I was seven, I read Grey's Anatomy cover to cover. I don't know that I understood that much of it, but, um, but I read it and, uh, I had a stethoscope, like a real stethoscope, not one of those like plastic things. And I, I think part of it probably quite honestly was, I was not a clumsy kid necessarily. I just played pretty hard. So I wound up with a lot of injuries <laughs> as a young child, <laughs> pretty substantial injuries, as you may be able to see like that garbage thing. dumpster. Um, but so I think I spent a lot of time around doctors and I had like really bad earaches. And so I was like always in and out of, of dealing with physicians. And I just had some really incredible physicians and nurses who were just not only caring, but just like great with kids. And, and I think that really inspired me. Uh, and, and I remained on that path. Don't answer. This is a follow-up question for another time. Don't answer that. What is the worst sport to watch on TV? I'll know if you're honest or not. Cause I think I know your answer. For me, it's cricket. Cause I don't understand it. And it's re- it can be really, really long game like that's the one where i feel like if i understood it i really might appreciate it but i don't so i thought you were gonna say baseball no i can watch baseball on tv it's not my least favorite it's not one of my favorite sports but having played baseball growing up like i can appreciate baseball i just don't often choose to watch it but like if i walk into somebody's house and they're like we're watching this baseball game i'm like cool so it's I'm going to share something from me before you start asking me questions. Uh, I grew up seeing baseball in person. Like when I was a little kid, my dad took me to see the Houston Astros because we were living Mm -hmm. outside of Houston. Uh, And so I love watching baseball if I'm there in person. I have rebelled against, I've been to the College World Series a couple of times with my dad because he used to live in Omaha or outside of Mm -hmm. Omaha, actually. Uh, I like going to live baseball games. There are two people for whom I will watch a baseball game on TV. They have both been guests on the show. Uh, Kate. Mm -hmm. Kate loves math and Mika. I will watch baseball for those two. And sometimes I will even watch baseball when they're not with me, if they're just texting me about the games. Mm -hmm. So. So I made it. So now it's my turn to ask you. Um, They've already been checked off in my spreadsheet because I don't really, I'm not able to access my spreadsheet while we're talking. So I check them off beforehand. I check them off when I write them down. Cool. But you're clear. Excellent. Thank you. I hope I did okay. I think you did great. Cool. All right. It's now time for Cami Chaos, who is parched to answer her five mildly interesting questions. And because I feel like I've been a little I've been a little cruel, not intentionally, but a few of the questions have been like yeah, okay, probably because I'm really <laughs> competitive. But the, <laughs> the wait a minute, are we competing with questions now too? No, I no, I just I always like I get juiced up and I'm like, oh, I want to make this one kind of sneaky hard. I, so, I know um, that you're competitive about these things. Uh, it's yeah. part of the reason I like it. It feels like a healthy competitive outlet for you. All right, cool. Thanks. Yeah, again, mildly interesting people cheaper than therapy. So the, uh, <laughs> there that's are a couple the of tagline, right? Yeah, that's our, <laughs> yeah. It's not wildly interesting guests anymore. It's cheaper than therapy. Um, so a couple of them are kind of thematic. One is going to like require some significant exposition. One's kind of a negative one. And then okay. one is a super easy throwaway that you can do whatever you want with it. That's going to be the hardest one for me. I guarantee it. I don't the one think you think so. is easy. I'm going to be like, Oh, you're, you're really going to appreciate it. Okay. All right. I'm excited. So I'm ready. ready. Let's do this. Okay. Question number one, you have to take an animal cartoon character as a pet. This can be from 
comics. It can be from television cartoons. It can be from movies. Who do you choose and why? You can pass if you want. No one's passed on the first question before. <laughs> Animal cartoon character. Yes. So you can't pick like I want Wonder Woman to be my pet. I can't it be like be an Rocket the Rocket from Rotten to Rocket. No. It's not a cartoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not a okay. cartoon. Did Sabrina the Teenage Witch ever air as a as a cartoon? It might have run as like a short kind of Archie series, but I don't know that it was ever cartoonified. God, cartoon. Uh I know I know what I want. Uh okay. Spike the Bulldog. Yep. From the he was he was uh an antagonist with Sylvester the Cat. Okay. Yep. I want Spike the and Bulldog. And Tweety. Okay. Cool. Yeah. He could he could talk, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. He was um, kind of like you. He was incredibly grumpy um, and protective. Got it. Yeah, so no, I Spike remember. Spike the Bulldog, yeah. And he had his Spike collar, right? He did. And yeah. and though Spike the Cat is named after Spike the Vampire and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it did occur to me while we were naming him Spike that yeah. I loved, I always loved Spike the Bulldog with the Spike collar. I think his name was Spike. Someone's going to be like, his name was actually Gertrude. Um, and that'll be fine if that's the case, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Why? Just because he's protective and grumpy? He's sweet. He's okay. protective and grumpy, but he's just like so sweet and loyal. And, uh, and yeah, I, I just like, he made me feel like as a child, I remember him feel, making me feel like safe and happy. Excellent. I think I had him. No, as droopy. I was going to say, I think I had him on one of the, Taco Bell commemorative glasses from El Paso, Texas, circa 1978. Man, Taco Bell in Texas really loved their commemorative glasses. They really did. And yeah. Long John Silver's with their doubloons that you would get. Mm -hmm. And they had and Miss Long John Silver's. Um, Long John Silver's. Cool. Great job. Okay. Keeping that was with hard. The, oh, my Keeping God. with the theme of comics and cartoons. So thematic beginning to mildly interesting questions. Beavis or Butthead? Neither. <laughs> wow. Why? They're annoying little punk ass bitches. All right. That's a fair answer. There are no wrong answers. This is a I have, I've enjoyed watching Beavis and Butthead, but like, no, they're not my thing. If you'd asked huh. me a Daria related question, that would have been more challenging. But No, no, no King of the Hill, no Daria, none of that. I was just curious about Beavis and Butthead because yeah, there's like I a new. It. I enjoy watching it, but I don't enjoy them as individuals. The new series launches on 420. Oh, well, we've got two things to do on 420 now. What? What is that, Cammy? What else happens on 420? Oh my goodness, Rick, thank you so much for asking. I haven't thought about it. We have a rocket scientist who is also a cannabis industry, I don't know, Cannabis, can, cannabis professional uh, as a guest for our 420 episode. And that's that's crazy. Wait, and 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 we will be releasing it as a premiere on YouTube at 420 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on 420. And that's not even it. That's there's what? one more there's thing. more. And Rick and myself and our amazing guest, Mark Lewis, the uh, aforementioned cannabis professional, will all be there to live chat with you while the premiere is happening. Wow. I, I am blown away by your answer to that Beavis and Butthead question. Thank you very much for You're the welcome. additional exposition. All right, so ch checking that one you off. You said there would be a lot of exposition this time. Yeah, that might not have been the one <laughs> I was talking about. Uh, okay, this is the one I think is going to be challenging and may require a little exposition just because Okay. this is one of those questions that... Is it as hard as the travel question? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, this is one of those questions that like, if we were talking together, this would result in like hours of conversation. I'm just wondering... If there's like under the lightning round, if there's a super quick answer that can okay, be a question, can we have yeah. hours of conversation about it later today? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. All right. What was your favorite band that you ever saw live at La Luna? 
Uh, Soul coughing. Oh, see, that was a lot easier than I thought. Yeah, I, I, so I saw a lot of shows at La Luna, but honestly, that like that period of my life was kind of a haze. But I remember, I don't, I don't even think I was super into going to see Soul Coughing. I was yeah. sitting at the bar, I was having a drink, I was chatting with the bartender about some band that they were playing behind them. Mm-hmm. And I went to go see Soul Coughing because my friend was like, let's go see it. And they were just, Oh, amazing live. And the venue was perfect. And like just the throbbing bass and beats of soul coughing. And I just remember like the, the song circles really resonates with me. And Mm -hmm. when I get really stressed or anxious, sometimes the circle song will just play in my head head again and again. And I just remember listening to that live and actually like dancing, which if you ever see me dance is a horrible and ridiculous thing that happens occasionally. Um, You've heard her saying it's it's, worse. Yeah. It's worse than that. If you can imagine. I remember the show so incredibly clearly and I had never heard of them. And then all of a sudden I was listening to their music constantly. So So that's awesome. Yeah. So, and, and for additional context for folks who may not have been in Portland as long as us or, um, or have never been to Portland. There was in the late nineties, like a couple venue slash bar things that were really kind of tantamount to a young Portlanders experience back then. And La Luna was one of them. I think Satyricon was another and um, they've since gone away, but uh, they're a very kind of nostalgic venue for a lot of folks. Agree. That's so, a great question. A good answer. Like you were really quick on that Thank one. Thank you. I just, well, I felt it. So, but yeah, amazing question. Wow. This wow. one, this one, I'm, I'm hesitant because it means you're going to have to call somebody out. And I know you don't necessarily like I to don't do like that, that, but I feel obligated. I really want to know. And if I want to know, then okay. the listeners and watchers want to know. So I feel obligated on their behalf to ask you. No one gave me this question. I'm just thinking ahead and doing things on your behalf. So, oh boy, are you ready? No. Who? And it, it it doesn't have to be because of their performance. It just could be because of your expectations of their performance. Who in your mind has been the biggest disappointment on Hot Ones? Somebody you're really excited for and you watched it and you're like, oh, man. So here's the problem. It's not even so much that I have a hard time calling people out. It's that when I'm super disappointed by a person, my brain is like, let's just pretend that didn't happen. I'm going to have to pass. I need to think like this is. I don't know if you all know how much Hot Ones means in our household. It is definitely our favorite talk show. It's mo- it's it is. And if you haven't seen Hot Ones, I'm sure Rick has linked it. It's an amazing show. Okay. And Sean yeah. Evans asks the best questions. And then also he's drugging people with hot sauce while he asks. So like mm-hmm. the the answers are just so amazing. And some people are just like well, and for some me, people having, are awful. Having to eat on camera would just like destroy me I have to, more so than the hot sauce. That made me, that made me cry. I need to go over here and dab my nose off camera. <laughs> it's hay fever season folks. Welcome I'm to spring thinking, in like, Oregon. All I do can think right now so, is. I knew this might be difficult. I do realized. Do you have a list asked, for me to choose from? No, I'm going to, I'm going to rephrase it for you. Okay. 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 And this can be multiple people. Because it came up, I think, in a very recent ep- 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 episode, so I will use this format. Okay. Who Who is your Mount Rushmore of Hot Ones? Who is, in your mind, the four most successful and memorable? Kristen Bell. Uh, you can. You have three more. Oh, I get to pick. Okay. It's a Mount Chris- Rushmore. Have you seen Mount Rushmore? I, I have. I just yeah. I was just okay. So Kristen Bell. Hmm. Fucking amazing. Pedro Pascal because he daddy, mm-hmm. but also uh, when someone we really it's it's easy when someone we don't really care about goes on hot ones to watch it and be interested, but when someone that we that I'm just gonna say I instead of we have like great respect and affection for goes on the show and then they're dumb, 
Mm-hmm. And I mean, dumb, not like they don't have brain power, but they're like unfun on the show or unsportsman like. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really frustrating. So Kristen Bell, and then like we got to go with some of the Kristen Bell, Pedro Pascal. You have two more. I'm I I'm just trying to choose really carefully because there have been some That's amazing. Fair. I look at a list of guests so I can kind of refresh my memory. It's not that no. I don't know who's on there. It's if you just... don't know them, if you don't know them off the cuff, then it ceases to be a lightning round. <sighs> it's not a multiple choice round. It's a lightning. But there's round. been like so, they have had twenty only... seasons of this show. So so your Mount Rushmore only has two people on it. No, so it's going to have fine. more people. Nope. Done. It would have been easier if you Checking asked me off. what my favorite song. Oh, you can't because I'm it's done. It. I can tell Too you. Late. I can tell you. I thought nope. the DJ Khaled. Mm-hmm, was I'm not. Oh my god! Oh, oh, the guy's name that I'm I not like, even listening anymore. I am still lost talking. The I get to off. keep going. Can't. You can't stop me. I just can't remember the guy's name, but he plays that song. I like you. I didn't even give a fuck Post about him. Post Malone. Post Malone. I adored the Post Malone episode. I knew that he existed as a human, but I'd never even bothered to listen to his music mm-hmm. until we watched the Post Malone episode. And I was like, what a nice boy. Yep. Uh, and I don't know if he's a nice boy or if he's just like a great manners and was fantastic on hot ones. But then I started listening to his music and then I yep. started getting really into his music and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I know who my fourth is and it is a direct rebuttal to Jake fucking Gyllenhaal. Jake, what? who was shaming people for doing things like drinking milk and uh, using, using wet toothpicks. Wipes. And Tip it mix. is yeah. uh, Olsen. Olsen, yes. Uh, yeah. Gosh, have you all figured out yet that I'm not great with names? Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen was a powerhouse of amazingness when she took on the wings of death. And I, Jake Gyllenhaal shamed her for using a toothpick until he realized that then, it was her. But. And then he knew it was her, and he was scared that Scarlet Witch was going to tear him limb from limb. Because Mysterio yes. only has his VR blah, blah. Right. But Scarlet Witch can do some damage. Yeah. I would like to point out that we discussed this as we were watching the most recent season finale with Jake Gyllenhaal. I would like to see. Oh, Anthony. Anthony Mackie was also amazing. Yeah. I would like to see all of the Marvel characters. We'd like to see a super cut of yeah. all the Marvel actors on Hot Ones and their performance because there have been a lot. Of them. But also, let me just Kristen. Maybe Bell. I'll put maybe I'll put that playlist together for mildly interesting people. Maybe that's what I'll, I'll put it on our our like YouTube that. site, and I can catch them all. I want to talk Pokemon. momentarily though about Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard. Dax Shepard was on the show first, where they had little mm-hmm. baby weenie, Tabasco, not so tough hot sauce, Cholula. Like, yeah, and and I'm not making fun of Tabasco or Cholula. We own Tabasco and Cholula. We use them. We are a hot sauce household. But Dax Shepard did really well in this early iteration of Hot Ones. And then seasons later, Kristen Bell came on, who they are married to one another, Mm -hmm. uh, with much hotter spices and did so much better. So anytime someone is like, Dax Shepard did such a great job. Yes, Dax did a great job with what he was given. I'd like to see what happened if he and Kristen Bell competed against one another with the most recent lineup of super hot hot sauces. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming back around and actually was, making it a lightning round. I had to rally. That was hard. Wow. So, Rick. I thought that Luna question was going to be tough, but woof. So I gave you a bunch of hard questions this time. So this one's going to be the easiest one. Okay. Are you ready? No. Cause if you question say question number five, uh, super easy. Okay. Bread makes you fat. Yes. Oh, interesting. That, okay. No, That's bread it. in and of itself doesn't make you fat. Let's talk oh. about healthy dietary status. But you, you need to eat what you need to eat. And some people happen to be fat and some people don't happen to be fat. And for some people, that's because... That's just how they are. I'm fat. I don't wander around trying to be fat all the time. I'm just fat. Right. It's perfectly normal for, I eat so much healthier than so many people I know who are thin. And that's just the way it is. But in the Scott Pilgrim universe, in the Scott Pilgrim universe, murmur, murmur. bread makes you fat. Yeah. Yes, Scott, bread makes you fat. There you go. 
Cool. Thank you. Well done. You've made it through all five questions. This has been yet another episode of Mildly Interesting Questions with Cammie and Rick. If there were any of those questions where you're like, I would like to see a guest try and answer that question, please let us know in comments and we'll add it to the pile of questions, but put it closer to the top, depending on which questions have the most votes. I already and know. I think- there's one, there's one question that's going to return when we, re- when we reset. Yeah. And then there's, and, uh, there's one for, I already know I want to add. Much like Mount Rushmore, there are four opportunities to become a question. So <laughs> thank you for dealing with that part of the show. Now, can we please get on to the production meeting? Because something has happened within the last few minutes that I would like to be paying attention to, but we're recording, so I can't. So well, we can just, I mean, we've been recording for 49 minutes. We can just call this the production meeting. Did you have we notes? Need, I, I have production <laughs> notes for once where we okay. actually have production stuff to talk about. I have so. a production note that's called family feud, but I can't remember why I wanted to talk about the family feud further. So you go. Okay. So, um, first this is, a, this is more a question to the, uh, Listeners, YouTube, primarily Community. YouTube, we, but primarily the YouTube crowd. Like okay. we're we're toying, as I mentioned several times, they, they seem to be top of mind. We're toying with YouTube Shorts and trying to figure out like we like the short form factor. We like they're easily digestible. We were just curious, like if there were certain times of day that you tend to consume that content, so that we can publish at the right times where it's right there, easily accessible. We were also kind of curious of last week we put, so this production meeting will come out next Tuesday. So two weeks ago, we put out a ton of shorts, just kind of testing, wow, we did. Seeing, seeing if people like them. There was just a lot of good short content. The, pri- the Last week, we didn't put out as much short content, not because there wasn't a lot of good stuff to chop up. It was just like, we didn't want to overwhelm you with content. In in fact, one of the shorts was, dude, why are you constantly in my shorts? Which I didn't realize would sound <laughs> as funny as it did when I said it. But, um, so we're trying to figure that stuff out. Uh, so if you have any feedback on the shorts or long form or whatever, as always, you know, that's, that's my first production note. Have you figured out what Family Feud is yet? Uh, no, but saying Family Feud to myself prompted me to come up with a, an excellent question for later. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you're, as our production crew, your feedback, if you're not listing it on your LinkedIn as part of Mildly Interesting People production crew because you haven't yet received a sticker, Oh, sign up, sign up for stickers. Let's Just sign be really up for honest. stickers. Also, it's not that couple, hard. We have a couple people that I need to send stickers to, but because of the foot injury, I haven't been going down into the basement, which is where the stickers yeah. live. Yeah. And I am going to get on that this today. I'm getting on that today. So they'll we have, be mailed out by Monday at the latest. We have plenty of stickers. So, uh, actually we, we don't. want, we are down we to want, less than half and, we can always make more. So That's if you're true. part of the production crew, you want to show off your produ- production crew pride in mildly interesting people, please let us know. There's a link on practically every video. Uh, sign up for some stickers and we'll send those to you soon. But it may entitle you to some other stuff that we may send from time to time. Who knows? We could get crazy like that. So everybody likes mail, right? So long as it's not junk mail. Or okay. from the IRS. Right. So here's another thing I've been thinking about, given that our content is so long, especially maybe not so much on YouTube because that's kind of annoying, but because on podcasts, um, people tend to be used to it. I'm wondering if we need to create like little breaks in the podcast that they're not really ad bumps. They're just more like, Hey, if you haven't, if you haven't gotten it, you know, we'll be right back. Hey, it's Rick Terosi. If you haven't gotten the sticker yet, go to this link, grab a sticker, 
we appreciate you being on or, or being a, a fan of mildly interesting people. And then, and now we're back. And just do I thought that. it would be more something like, if you haven't had a glass of water today, can you please get one, fill that up and drink it? Hydration is important. Can we do that? I love that. Yeah, I love that people. too. Yeah, okay. I love that. Like, but I just feel like breaking it up for them a little bit because okay. the po- the podcast episodes are running roughly an hour. So like, that's a long time to be listening. But seriously, and are to... you hydrating? Yeah, you should be. So that's my other production note. And please, production crew, chime in on that. We're not we're not going to do it on the YouTubes because I, I find that kind of like YouTube is probably doing that to a lot of you already, given the length. Oh, of what that's we're right. Doing. Because I'm not on a YouTube fancy commercial free account, but Rick's accounts are. Yeah. When I get commercials, it's annoying. Yeah. So I don't want to do that to the YouTube folks, but I think it might be fun. For the podcast, not that we don't, not that we're not concerned about your hydration, we are. But you visually can see us hydrating, which will remind you to hydrate. The podcast listeners, they have no visual, so this we have is to help actually them. Actually, water in new and different ways. So, are you cool with that idea? Can we like test drive some bumps? Are you asking me? Or are you asking the people? Yes, yes. both. I'm okay, okay with that, cool. as long as it's fun. You know me. More fun than a fucking barrel full of monkeys. I do not find a barrel full of monkeys to be fun. That's quite upsetting. Apparently, you've never experienced a barrel full of monkeys. It's ridiculous fun. Why would you shove a bunch of monkeys in a barrel? That is inhumane and cruel. Did you never have the barrel of monkeys? And then think about all the feces that would be in the barrel with the monkeys. It's unhygienic and stinky. Those poor monkeys. What is wrong? Yeah, I know what a barrel full of monkeys game is, Rick. It was a yellow barrel make, with red monkeys. This is going to make this next thing that I was concerned about as a real production note. This is real, real production. <laughs> and I'm being serious. I'm going into Coach Rick mode. Uh, oh. This makes this feedback a lot easier. It was going to be hard, but since you got shitty about the monkeys. Literally, because the monkeys were shitting in the barrel all over each other. It was sticky. Are you ready? No, Take a deep I've breath. never... I don't have to deal with Coach Rick. That's for your startups and stuff. No, this is real production stuff, and I feel bad about it. And so I would like to formally apologize about it. And I just want us to try and do better on this. Mahesh is the pronunciation of our super fan's name. Mahesh. Mahesh. And we have been missing. I'm sorry. Cammy and I have been mispronouncing it the whole time oh. as somebody whose last name is pronounced in wildly different ways, depending on who uh, is saying it. I apologize for not being more conscious about that. Um, I'm sorry that this is coming so late in the episode, but you are such a super fan that unfortunately I think you've listened this far because you're usually kind enough to do that. And, and you've listened to a slaughter your name. I'm glad yeah. you brought this up. I'm not yeah. even and upset so, that you brought this. I feel horrible, but yeah. So Mahesh, pu- Mahesh, Mahesh. Yeah. So, okay. um, but please let I us wanted, know. Like, I don't want to take Rick's word for it. It's let in me know. the intake document. So, oh, fantastic! That, Never mind. That you, is, and and I wanted to make that connect, correction in today's production meeting because we will be recording. Mahesh's episode soon. Yeah. The next guest coming out is our 420 episode, which we already talked about. It'll be premiering. Cammy and I will be in chat. Mark will be tuning in from uh, Trade Show Floor, uh, Cannabis Science Trade Show Floor. But the next guest after that will be Mahesh. So I just want to correct that issue before we got into that situation. And again, our apologies. We promised to do better. And uh, sorry, sorry that that happened it was actually that was actually very serious and appropriate and i'm sorry for thinking that you were going to be ridiculous nope because that nope. wasn't ridiculous at all i don't like having my name i'm gonna tell, tammy. I tell oh, it's not even the tammy it's that cammy is my nickname cammy is the shortened version of my name my name is canberra i was named after a place that isn't even called canberra 
And so the pronunciation of my name is a mystery to most people. And for a, a large majority of my childhood, when I had my maiden name, mm-hmm. I had my maiden name was Scott. I don't even care if I tell you. And so everyone thought my name was Scott. And then some variation of Cambra, Cambra, Cambra. Uh, but I kept getting put in the boys PE class in high school because they were convinced that my name was Scott and that I just filled out the form wrong for my name. Um, and so no one pronounces my first name correctly. It's very frustrating. So, and then, yeah. And then sometimes people call me Tammy and I don't have the bangs to be a Tammy. So you did at one point, but the, I did. Um, and, and the, I don't have those anymore. So no one should call me Tammy. But the thing that just dawned on me, I was worried this was coming a little late in the episode, but who is the king of time codes and chapters? Mahesh. Mahesh. Did I say it so, right? uh, yeah. So all I'm I have to do is it. put a big, we're sorry, Mahesh time, time code, code, and he'll be able to jump right to it. Problem solved. Thank you, technology. Wait. Yeah. Nope. No. Nope. I have no wait. Duh. Okay, cool. So uh, it's been a while. Sorry it took so long. We I will edit this, is this more down. More than an hour. Yeah. You're like lu- you're lucky we're not doing this live. That's all. That's all I can say. Remember so, when we used to do live shows? Uh, that's so stressful, though. It is so stressful because you never have any idea what's going to come out of my mouth. Yeah, exactly. I need I need like a ten second, twenty second <laughs> delay and like a button that I'm like I'm muting you because I know <laughs> what's coming out of your mouth. So um, we will get this chopped up, get it posted. This comes out Tuesday as usual with our production episodes: audio in the morning, video in the evening, um, and then four twenty episode. If you can join us, please do. It'll be fun to chat with all y'all in chat uh, while we all watch the episode together. I don't think I've even, I usually watch the episodes a couple of times just as part of the editing process. And there weren't that many edits. So the show's going to be new to me too, because I'm forgetful. So, uh, I'm going to start work super early that day so that I can be off work. Uh, cause I have you a should job. do the same. Yeah, yeah. You should do the same people start work early some... so you can come join us. Yeah. I'm, so I'm going to start work hella early, and then I'm going to take the uh, rest of the afternoon off. I might partake in the greenery goodness that is 420 uh, on 420, and then answer your questions in my compromised state. In the chat, she's not doing. In the life. chat, no one's putting me on video. That condition. We want to kind of like we don't want to do live always, but as as Tammy is it? Tammy is that your name? Oh, I'm sorry, Cammy. As Cammy implied, we're just getting to know one another. Cammy implied she <laughs> used to, she used to do a lot, a lot of live, a lot, a lot of live stuff. So okay. it's definitely something we want to explore. We think there are opportunities to do it, not only live on the interwebs, but perhaps live in person. So we I would like to miss the live in person. I'm not going to yeah. lie, I kind of miss the live in person. Yeah. We both used to do a lot of events and live shows and, and that kind of thing. So that's somewhere out there on the production roadmap. But um, I just had an yeah. amazing idea. I'll save cool. it for later. Please do. We can always record a short where you can share your amazing idea. It's just I have like to talk with someone first. We've gone on very, very, very long. God, at this Rick, point. So you talk so I have so much. Much, so much editing to do. Thank you, as always, production crew. Without you, the show wouldn't happen. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, We wanted to let you know, since you probably don't monitor the numbers as closely as we do, but we're edging close to 200 subscribers on the YouTubes, and we are nearing 1,000 downloads on the podcast. And that's all thanks to you, our production crew. We appreciate you being here, and we will... See you on Thursday, 420 with Mark Lewis. Woo! Bye-bye. Bye, y'all.